The internet itself is really only only 20 years old, so we're just in the in the I think in the early stages of trying to develop what the appropriate uh, doctrines are to defense. But we think that they uh, proceed on at least three levels. We need, I think, at the individual user level, what you'd call good hygiene. You just need to download all of the uh, the appropriate patches and make sure your security uh, is is up to speed. You also need a, uh, a second layer, which is a ring of firewalls, intrusion detection devices. And then you need, I think, a layer which I'd call more active defenses, which is uh, an ability for uh, governments to understand and, and counter the kinds of uh, more malicious threats that might be out there uh, against uh, both government and critical private sector uh, computers. Well, in the United States, uh, we have a, a set uh, established roles. The Department of Defense it has the principal role for def defending our military networks, the networks that operate our weapon systems, our command and control, our communication systems. For the, uh, the government systems as a whole outside of defense and for the private sector, that, uh, the principal role for that is our Department of Homeland Security. Now, the Department of Defense is able to bring much technical expertise and supports the Department of Homeland Security, but in that role, it is a supporting agency, not the principal agency. One of the things about, about that threat is that there are people often have focused on the immediate damage that a, a cyber attack or intr intrusion might do, that it might bring down a power grid or uh, some do, do damage to a financial network or something like that. And those are things that we need to worry about. But the, the, the Google threat, I think, is much more a threat of uh, theft of intellectual property. I mean, the, uh, the U.S. and the Australian economies uh, thrive on the, on the strength of, of the kinds of intellectual developments that our societies have made. And so we need to be able to protect those uh, from, from theft on the Internet and elsewhere. So I think uh, that's one of the new, new uh, avenues that the cyber threat poses. Well, I think there are several important ways. I think, I mean, I think collaboration might take the, uh, the form of shared warning as we, as we see the kinds of threats and uh, develop uh, means to, uh, to address them. We can, we can uh, share that warning. We can share uh, technology, uh, we can share uh, uh, approaches, uh, and uh, the, uh, these international uh, uh, collaborations are particularly important in the, in the realm of the internet which has no sovereign bound boundaries. It, it stretches all over the world with, with uh, uh, no uh, interest in terms of which countries it's in. Uh, so we need, we need, I think, a broad set of international uh, uh, collaborative agreements to be able to uh, address the the nature of that threat. Well, we're very satisfied with the, uh, the level of, uh, uh, of contribution we're getting from Afghanistan right now. China is growing both militarily and economically and it's, it's critical that, that China play a constructive role in, in Asia and in the, in, the, in the world beyond, and uh, I think both the U.S. and Australia are engaging China directly in the hopes of achieving that outcome. Two nations such as the United States and, and China are always going to have some uh, individual disagreements. Our, our hope is that the, uh, the fabric of the, uh, uh, of the relationship will be strong and we'll be able to uh, uh, pursue a, a, a peaceful and constructive relationship despite the occasional disagreement. The cyber threat that we talked about is certainly an important one. Afghanistan is, is, is a, a critical uh, and urgent uh, threat right now and things like uh, counter piracy operations where the U.S. and Australia are jointly engaged in trying to address that threat off of the coast of Africa are, are all examples, I think, of the, the alliance thriving.